Hey, what's up you guys? It's Sarah. How's it going? I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Today I'm going to be talking about Breathless by Jennifer Nevin? Nevan? I don't know how to say it. It's the author of All the Bright Places, which I still have yet to read. It's still on my TBR. We're going to get there. It's on my Christmas list. I promise we'll get to it, but today we're going to focus on Breathless, which came out this year, and I can't wait to talk about it with you guys, so let's get started. For those of you who don't know, Breathless takes place in Ohio in the beginning, and it starts out with this girl. Her name is Claude, and she finds out that her parents are going to get divorced, and this is a big shock to her, and her mom takes her, and they move down to this island off the coast of Georgia, and she and her mom are basically living on this island while her dad's back at their old house and she's trying to deal with the fact that her parents are separated and the floor has been taken out from under her. You know, she doesn't understand why they're getting divorced. She's just graduating high school and she's going to go to college and now her parents are getting divorced and so she's thrown onto this island that doesn't have cell reception and she's got to figure out what the heck's going on and she's got to kind of get over this hump that's been thrown her way as her parents are getting divorced and she's trying to help her mom recover and it's basically her summer on this island as she tries to cope with all of that. Considering all the hype I heard about All the Bright Places, I was so excited to read this and I have to say I did not love this book. I think I would give it a solid C and I'm going to explain all my reasonings as to why in the spoilery section so if you don't want to be spoiled you're gonna want to hop out now, read the book, come back, and we're gonna talk about it. Okay so bye people who don't want to be spoiled, go read it and come back. But those of you who read it, let's talk. So I take notes as I read books, right? Because, you know, I want to remember everything I want to talk about for my videos. And my first note for Breathless was, whoa, hormones. <laughs> Our main character, Claude, is so horny all the time. The entire book is basically her thinking about sex and wishing she could have sex and thinking about boys and how boys are insects. Don't get me wrong, like, I'm fine with reading about that, but it's, it was just a lot because I wasn't looking for like erotica and it's not but this character is so focused on boys and getting a boyfriend in sex and it was just like a big surprise to me I was not at all prepared for the whole book to just be like so focused on all of that. So we start with Claude in Ohio and she's dating this kid who I can't remember the name of because he lasts about a chapter in the book and she always is talking about how they like make out a bunch and they go really far but she can never actually sleep with him and how she doesn't understand why she can't maybe she's waiting for like Mr. Wright or whatever and she thinks that Mr. Wright is this Wyatt kid and I was actually very glad that she didn't end up having a relationship with Wyatt because this dude is literally just like a fantasy like she thinks she likes him but she doesn't know anything about him and she always just kind of stares at him like oh like Wyatt's so nice but then like Literally, she just kisses him randomly when she's like, yeah, like, my parents are getting divorced and I'm moving. And he's like, oh, that sucks. And she's like, I want to kiss you. Like, what? I don't know. This girl is so weird. She's so different from me. But like, okay, good for her for like going after her and getting the kiss. Whatever. I mean, I would argue that this isn't that good of a thing to do because, you know, White has a girlfriend. But like, okay, girl. You want to go for it? You can go for it. So then after that, when she moves down to this island in Georgia, he's texting her a little bit when she has Wi-Fi, and he sends her, like, a shirtless pic, and she's like, oh, like, imagining his body on top of mine in the bed, and I'm just like, okay, like, can you calm down? Like, this is just, like, some guy, you were 18 years old, you were a high schooler, I get it, you're sexually frustrated or whatever because you haven't had a lot of experience but apparently you have because you had that one boy the whole book is just like this girl wanting to get laid and it's just like a little bizarre and I don't know if there's gonna be the argument of how it's like pro-feminist because you know women's sexuality is being talked about more and like that's fine this is not like an anti-feminist talk I'm just I'm just saying it's it's a lot of sex talk that I was not totally prepared for and not necessarily liking but okay it's fine it's fine let's move on and so her parents are divorced and I totally get how that's a hard time but it is literally the most teenager thing ever to be moved to paradise literally she's on this like beautiful island and just be moping around the entire time because I don't want to be here. I want to be with my friends in Ohio. Mom, my parents got divorced. I was like, yes, it's a legit thing. But like, she's just moping around the entire time. And I'm like, okay, you're on this island that's like awesome. You're staying there for free. Your mom is like a famous author and she's doing research on a book. Why don't you help your mom with that? And she does, but you know. It's like, okay, mopey, like, I know life sucks, but come on, let's, let's 
take it with a grain of salt here. So then she's on this island and she's reading this book, like The Joys of Sex or something weird. And then she sees like this actress that she likes and so she cut her hair, which like, okay, like more power to you. And so then she's like adjusting to the island. And I felt so bad, her cousin, committed suicide and she's sleeping in her cousin's old bedroom with like a giant picture of him on the wall like that would just be so sad I don't really know why that was a detail in the book I mean it gave backstory to like the house and her aunt who by the way was like oh like I'll be there soon like here's my house here's some food and everything but the aunt doesn't show up until like the end of the book which I thought was bizarre and so yeah I don't really know why her cousin's suicide story was in there I mean it was just there like I don't really think there was like an actual like point to that so that was a little random oh my gosh I'm wrong it's not suicide he drowned in a riptide what am I saying there was like the picture of him when the ocean I am so sorry that is not what that was that was not suicide that was different thing different thing my bad but still same rules apply I don't really know why that story was there okay so then Jeremiah comes in and I have to say I didn't really like Jeremiah the dude's like I told you not to fall in love with me I'm like okay let's not copy a walk to remember here first of all and second of all he says this and then kisses her and I'm like okay already that puts a bad taste in my mouth because it's like all right so you're already setting me up not to like you because you don't want anything serious you just want to mess around with this girl you literally tell her like don't fall in love with me and then you do all this stuff and you treat her like your actual girlfriend like I just I don't like relationships that are like friends with benefits to the start I don't like that and so then to add on to the other things I didn't like about Jeremiah that made it very hard for me to like enjoy the book because I didn't really like our main characters especially because he's like I'm gonna kiss you and it's gonna change your mind and you're gonna fall in love with me it's like dude then don't kiss her like what are you doing he's so full of himself and I get that it's like part of his enduring quality but like it wasn't enduring to me at this point in my notes, I have another note that says, in all caps, she is so horny. I sense a running theme here. I also found the writing very telling and not showing, which like is fine, but it was a little annoying after a while. It kind of had like that Suzanne Collins flair where it was like, I did this, and then I did this, and then it was Tuesday, and then we did this, and then we did this, instead of showing like, can I enjoy the island? Can you show me what it is instead of just telling me? Claude's on the island six days. Six days! And she sleeps with Jeremiah on the sixth day. Oh my goodness. I mean, more power to you. Whatever. She was so horny. Like, I, I, I'm not surprised. But I'm just like, honey, you have known this guy six days. You couldn't sleep with the other guy because you were saving it for someone special or whatever her reasoning was. And then it's just like this dude from the island who you know it's just gonna be a summer romance who you have been told like he told you don't fall in love with me and all of a sudden like yeah you're sleeping with him like I just don't understand. So now we're on day 10 because they literally tell us in the book they're like day one, day two, day three. So day 10 people, day 10, four days after she slept with him she's like I would give up the world for him. Direct quote. What? What? What are we doing? What are we doing? A don't fall in love with him. B, slept with him after six days. C, you've known him for 10 days and you'd already give up the world? Like, what is this? Come on, come on now, honey. And I said this before in another video, I really like characters that are mature because I'm mature and so to see mature teens, it's nice every once in a while in a YA, but I don't always need it. But the problem is Claude was so immature, it was really kind of annoying. Okay, <laughs> that day when she gets stood up on the beach waiting for Jeremiah, she's sitting on the beach waiting for him to come and she realizes she's like, I think I'm getting stood up. And so she's there throwing rocks or shells into the water and she's like, that one's jealousy, that one's my flaws. And I'm like, okay, I like this. This is some character growth. And then Jeremiah doesn't end up coming and she's like, is he with another girl? He's probably with someone prettier than me. I knew I shouldn't have gone after him. What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh my God. Sweetheart, he stood you up. Are we surprised? He said he's not in love with you. He said don't fall in love with me. He's arrogant and whatever. He probably is with another girl and later on we find out he's not and he rushed to the mainland. But dude, you could tell someone. You could make an effort. I'm tired of that BS excuse where he's like, oh, like I had no cell service, which, okay, facts. But you could have done something. You could have left a note. Like, I don't know. I just was like, mm. 
not impressed. Let's talk about this character Jared. So Jared is supposed to be like her friend on the island but he only ever shows up like really randomly and we never see them bond that much. I think the most we saw them bond was that one party where they go into the kitchen to refill the snacks and they talk about how he really hasn't dated anyone or something like that and it's just like why do I care about this kid? Like he's just kind of there and he never really has a character arc. He doesn't really help move the plot forward at all. He's just there and sometimes he provides information that Claude needs so I was disappointed in that. I thought that was gonna go somewhere a little bit better. And I didn't really feel the friendship connection between Claude and Jared and I knew I was supposed to feel it but I just didn't. Something was missing. There was like a disconnect there. I will say good for her when he says like my mom had a panic attack I had to go to the mainland she's like dude you have to tell me and I'm like yes girl yes thank you because she was standing up for herself I was on board with that that was good okay so then as I said this girl is very horny and it's fine and whatever but we have this passage where it's talking about how in fifth grade fifth grade ladies and gentlemen that is like 11 years old how in fifth grade she learned how to masturbate and she used her stuffed animals and her electric toothbrush. Ladies and gentlemen, fifth grade. And that's freaking disgusting and I don't need that detail. Like don't, don't put that in here. That's disgusting. That should not be encouraged. Like why is this in the book and please don't ever put it in a book again. This is not erotica and that is gross and it didn't add anything to the story we already knew she was sex crazed like why did i need to read that why do i need that in my brain and overall i just found myself really not caring about her relationship with jeremiah he didn't appeal to me as a character i wasn't really rooting for them i couldn't figure out what was going to happen like is why it going to stay in the picture why it just kind of like evaporated from the story which like is fine i didn't really like him either but i didn't really like maya and so i wasn't enjoying the story that much because i didn't like claude either and so i was just kind of waiting for it to go somewhere and then it never did and so then I was just kind of waiting for it to be over. So then we reached the end and Maya Lee is not saying goodbye. Shocker! Like I'm not surprised at all and he told her that he was gonna say goodbye and he didn't and then he like came by before. It was weird. He was like, hey, I have to run and do this but I'm still gonna say goodbye to you. It's like, why did you even bother doing that? And she knew that he was gonna leave her. She knew it. Why do we like this kid? And yes, she finds a shark tooth in the sand, but I'm sorry, I'm like not impressed. I don't like him. If I was dating someone and I had a whole summer romance with him and he just left without saying goodbye, I would be pissed. Like, I don't, I'm sorry, I just didn't like it. <laughs> She's thinking about all the ways that she loved him. She comes up with two ways and it's how he touches her and she feels a spark and how he smells good. I met the love of my life on an island and he smells good and there's sparks when he touches me. Come on, we, we can do better than this. <laughs> Literally at the end of the book she's still waiting for him and I'm like, huh, sweetheart, he's gone, move on, come on, let's, let's move on. And that was breathless. And then I felt really bad about all the notes that I had made about this book because I read the author's note and yeah, <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> Apparently the character Jeremiah is based on Jennifer's actual husband and I'm sure they have a great romance story. I'm sure he is a wonderful guy and I'm sure she is a wonderful girl and I'm sure they had a great story but I'm sorry I didn't really like Breathless for all the reasons I said. It was kind of boring to me because I wasn't invested in the characters. I wasn't really down for like the whole like sex crazed main character that's just like not me and that's not what I'm into reading but if you liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I seriously would love to hear from you guys. Tell me what you thought of it because I was kind of disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Like I said before, I'd give it a C. It wasn't god awful and it wasn't great. It was just like, meh. That was kind of a waste of time, but like, all right. All the Bright Places is still on my Christmas list, so as soon as I read that, I will let you guys know and put a video up for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made you smile. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I have a writing page and I also post updates about my videos. It's at the underscore writing corner. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Sarah M. Caroline and that's Sarah with an H. Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every Thursday, so click that big red button if you want to see more from me and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I hope hope the holidays were good for you. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Thanksgiving, belated, whatever you're doing, whatever you're celebrating, happy holidays. I hope you have a safe, fun, healthy, happy time, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye!